Welcome to the WD-168. God gives us 168 hours every week to live, love, and enjoy. This is our take on this 168 from the Western Diocese. Last week, as we went on the air to bring you the news that was being heralded throughout the diocese that Christ is born and revealed, Christos Zanaviev Haidnetsov, our nation's capital was under siege as protesters stormed into the Capitol building, destroying one of the sacred shrines of democracy. Ironically, on our Christmas day, when we were recounting the words of nativity, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, we witnessed scenes that spoke just the opposite. Americans were left perplexed by the extent to which our nation, the land of the free and home of the brave, had really gone off course. You know, we as Armenians, and most especially as Armenian Christians, have a unique vantage point from which we viewed this assault. When we watched the assault on the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., a symbol of our democracy, we cannot help but think of our own most sacred shrines, symbols of where we celebrated our God-given right, our God-given life, our churches and our monasteries, and how they have been desecrated and destroyed. And the destruction continues in the attacks in Artsakh. Perhaps we are more sensitive to what happened in Washington or we should be more sensitive, because we came from places where we were the victims of oppression and forbidden from free expressions of our individual uniqueness. You know, we came to America like all who have immigrated here. And remember, very few people have not. With the dreams and desires for freedom, we saw in America an opportunity, a promise for freedom. And although it's not perfect, we saw its potential. An assault and destruction on a building is not merely dismantling the bricks and mortar. It's an assault on the symbol of, whether a symbol of our faith or a symbol of our freedom, of our being as people. The Armenian church, which has witnessed and walked with our people through massacres, destructions, and even genocide, cannot and will not stay quiet in the face of such heinous acts. A few months ago, we witnessed the attacks on our sacred shrines, land and people in Artsakh. And even more hurtful was the silence of the world in reaction to those atrocities. We can't be guilty of doing the same. Swiftly, we must condemn all expressions of intolerance and stand united with those who celebrate the human spirit and that spirit's God-given right to free expression. From our own church fathers, St. Nerses Shnorali or St. Nerses Lambronazzi, we read in their writings the affirmation of free human will and rationality and our need to create and therefore take responsibility for our destiny. Lambronazzi writes, it is myself, not the wrath of God, who is the cause of my own perdition. Through our teachings, messages, and services, we here at the Western Diocese condemn the destructive events that took place in Washington. And while the world struggles with the politics of the day, we point to the strengthening of our spiritual selves. To this end, we pause here in this country next Monday for the Martin Luther King holiday. The civil rights leader, first and foremost, he himself would tell you, was a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Were he alive today, be certain he would raise his voice against the current climate. Injustice anywhere, he said, is a threat to justice everywhere. In celebration of the holiday, our In His Shoes ministry will be commemorating with a three-day virtual retreat focusing on the prayer life of Reverend King. We're calling it Prayers That Move the Mover. Prayer and prayer connecting to the eternal God as expressed through Jesus Christ was the key to Reverend King's ability to bring about change of laws and change of heart. Our retreat begins this Saturday, and you can check out our Facebook page for more details.
The expression of faith was especially highlighted in our churches throughout the diocese in celebration of the Theophany, Astvaza Haidnutyun, and the traditional water blessing service in all of our parishes. At the cathedral, His Eminence Archbishop Hovnan celebrated the feast, and Derek Hugasian was selected as the Godfather of the Cross, recognizing his commitment to the Armenian Church, particularly here in the Western Diocese. Derek Hulgasian is the Chief Operating Officer at the Ar Ararat Home of Los Angeles. We congratulate him and wish him success with all of his endeavors. Also at the cathedral this week, the ranks of the servers of the church was increased when His Eminence ordained Narek Wogasyan and Osped Hamalian to the rank of deacon of the Armenian church during the Divine Liturgy last Sunday, January 10th. You know, the deacons of the Western Diocese are part of a group that is growing in numbers, especially among the young people. His Eminence has emphasized the importance of the work done by the Deacon's Council and commits his energy and blessings to the success of this group. Last week we shared with you that the San Diego and Sacramento parishes were expanding with buildings. We'd like you to take a look at some of the pictures that we shot just this week at the San Diego Armenian Church. The new year brings many new activities and events at the Western Diocese. We invite you to get involved in your local parish and with us online or in person. Check out our social media presence and make a point of connecting with your local parish priest. We look forward to seeing you in church with your masks on, of course, and online. And again next week when we take a look at that 168 from the WD.